Hello everyone. This is Jan Kromi and together we will continue the course Interdisciplinary Approaches to Language and its Use. In this presentation we will discuss eye movements in reading as an important source of information in the language comprehension research. While discussing the visual world paradigm, we already mentioned fixation and saccades as two key features of eye movements. While fixating a particular area, our eyes do not move and we extract information from that area. Saccades are abrupt jumps to other areas. There are also other eye movements such as smooth pursuit movements when we follow a moving object, but these are not important for reading so we will not discuss them here. One of the important questions is how much do we see during a fixation, because this may determine how much information are we able to extract and process via a fixation. We differentiate three main regions in the visual field. For reading and for many other cognitive processes, the foveal region is crucial because the part of the text which is in the foveal region is seen as sharp. The foveal region is delimited by the two central degrees of visual angle from fixation. This means that while fixating a text, we can see sharply about seven to nine letters. The parafoveal region is defined as the region ranging from the foveal region up to five degrees of visual angle from fixation, and it is related to a less sharp vision. However, it could play a role in reading. More than 5 degrees of visual angle are considered as peripheral region, which may be useful for certain cognitive processes, but not for reading. Importantly, we do not use the foveal region for, for all the words. From previous researches, we know that the lexical words tend to be fixated approximately in 85% of cases, whereas the function words approximately in 35% of cases. Also, we know that longer words have a generally higher probability to get fixated. There are various reasons why are certain words skipped. One reason is that they may be processed based on fixating previous word, but it may be also due to their predictability and other textual factors. What is well known is that while reading, there is a difference between the so-called perceptual span and the word identification span. The perceptual span consists of 3 to 4 letters to the left of fixation and of 14 to 15 letters to the right of fixation. Importantly, in scripts which are written from right to left, such as Arabic, the span is reversed and is longer to the left. The word identification span is shorter and usually it consists of 7 to 8 characters to the right of the fixation. In other words, there is a difference between what we can perceive during the fixation and what we can consciously identify. There have been disputes to what extent do we really use the information about the word identification span during reading. However, while, it, while uh, using eye tracking, we may automatically change certain letters outside the word identification span, which are still in the perceptual span. If we do this, the reader will not consciously recognize it but he or she will typically slow down reading, which is a sign that the whole perceptual span is somehow important for reading. One can ask, why is the perceptual span so disproportionate? There are several reasons for this. For example, we retrieve also the information about what follows after the word we are fixating, and therefore we need to see behind the word. Furthermore, we plan our forward saccades already while fixating a certain area, and the perceptual span may help us to do this effectively. We may say that the main function of a saccade is to bring a new part of text to the foveal region. Importantly, we do not extract information during saccades, which is a phenomenon called saccadic suppression. However, we may process the already extracted information while doing a saccade. As we already mentioned, we plan saccades already during fixations. Saccade latency is the time it takes to initiate the saccade and it differs widely based on various factors. The problem is that we cannot easily distinguish it from the time it takes us to extract the information at the given point. Saccades may be either forward or backward. 
In the research of reading, backward saccades, which are called regressions, are very important. On average, each tenth saccade is a regression, but the frequency may be highly influenced by text complexity and ambiguity. Certain regressions may have only a corrective function, especially when the pre previous forward saccade was too long. These corrective regressions tend to be short. However, longer regressions serve as an evidence of certain processing problems. We will return to this topic in the next presentation. Before we will conclude this presentation, I have one reading tip for you. If you would like to get deeper knowledge about our eye movements in reading, you should read an older but comprehensive review article by Keith Rayner. If you enjoyed the presentations, we would be glad if you would like them on YouTube. That is all from me now. See you next time.